Oh, yep. And my youngest used to there you go. The truck's going to open. It's going to move out of the way. That's going to go down. And then it'll, the truck will close back on. How's that? All right, we got day two of the 2019 Rocky Mountain driving experience. We're just passing police officer. We're in a 2020 or 2019. I'm screwing this all up. Policeman got my attention. Uh, we're in a 2019 BMW M850 i X Drive. It's got 523 horsepower and I think 577 foot pounds of torque. I looked it up. It's $131,000. We got the top down. Wilson has never been in a BMW. He's never driven a convertible. And we have sport mode engaged. <laughs> this thing is telling me costs nearly as much as his last tractor. And all those years in the plowing of the field, he's never had this experience. I think you can tell from his face, <laughs> his driving impressions of this car. Anything your face wants to add? Did he, you know? <laughs> uh, Wow. <laughs> so, so we're, uh, we're outside of Colorado Springs. We're driving through the mountains here. I hope the audio, man, this is as best I can do it. So it may be weird in your screen, but uh, convertible, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's a beautiful drive. It's a beautiful car. It's a 4.4 liter V8 twin turbo made it to an eight speed automatic transmission with a shortish kind of wheelbase here. It's really, it's really a coupe. The back seats are, are ridiculous. You're not going to use those. Full of luxury and, uh, yeah, we're having a good time. So, uh, I, I I don't think I don't think we have much to add on this. It's 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 kind of one of those dream cars that uh, you drive occasionally and uh, yeah, have a good time. Anxiety's gone now. <laughs> he's, he, I'm feeling more comfortable. <laughs> he's got yeah. He's, he's, initially, we we're a little nervous about uh, dinging it in accidents, but uh, he's opening it up now, so we're gonna have a fun drive. It's and that exhaust note, that exhaust note, right? Oh, crazy. I love the sound. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. All right. Well, uh, we're going to go swap something else here in a minute, so stay with us. It's going to be a good time. All right. Second vehicle today. We had to get out of the BMW, which he's still smiling about. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad. sad. I'm really sad. But we got to do a badass truck. We're in the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon in the four-wheel drive. This has a base price of 43 545 3.6 liter v6 under the hood we have an eight speed automatic transmission in this and we have a few options um, to kind of add all the stuff because of the rubicon package we're at 60 380 17 city 19 combined 22 highway um, this is the uh, jeep pickup if you will if that's what you're uh, calling it in your circles of friends um, it's really a great lifestyle pickup it's a uh, still a usable pickup as well the bed is a five foot bed, but one of the cool features of that bed is actually the tailgate has different uh, settings. And so you can put some plywood in there and just lift the tailgate up a little bit and actually sit on there and uh, not feel like you're falling out. So um, Wilson over here has never driven a Jeep besides like a really old CJ. And uh, did you even know the Gladiator existed? I heard a little bit about it. Probably from your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, it's it, this is a great new interior Jeep came out with with the Wrangler. Used in, in the Gladiator as well. It's really a nice interior. Much better than the I've been Jeep before. And what's interesting is this vehicle looks pretty badass. Um, I think. There's, there's some conversations online about the design, but I think it looks pretty badass. And that's really, um, to me, more functional with the bed. <laughs> okay. So start making funny faces. <laughs> All right, so Kelly, I, I know I missed a few details here. What's really going to stand out? Kelly's with uh, FCA Regional Communications Pro. She is the best. Well, it's really cool, I think, that the Gladiator came back after 26 years. Mm -hmm. So Jeep enthusiasts kept asking us, hey, bring a pickup back. We've had the Comanche, we've had the Scrambler, but really, let's, let's bring this Gladiator to market. So it's not only a Wrangler with a five-foot bed, and the reason behind that it is, you know, an all-new frame, and it has the capability to tow 7,650 pounds and has payload capability of 1,600 pounds. So, you know, you do want to maybe, as you're a farmer, uh, Wilson over here wants 
to you know take it out and put some hay in that and Halloween's coming up but if you also want to just tow your you know motorcycles or you've got some wave runners you're gonna take out to the lake you can do that it has all that capability so it's kind of an adventure vehicle for these Jeep enthusiasts so you know it's great features I've got I've got in the back seat I've got a ton of leg room it's got four more inches of leg room than, than the Wrangler mm -hmm. um, you know our tops can come off as you mentioned the windshield folds down so you want to take it on an off-road trail you really can have a ton of fun with this vehicle and what's the what's the trim steps here uh, is sport sport overland and rubicon and what do you start at with the, with the sport the sport is right around like 33. okay so you can get a, a reasonable sport or you yeah. can go fully loaded right yep. you know, an overland has a lot of they all have a lot of safety features but you get more of the safety and technology on the overland model as you know the rubicon steps it up with bigger tires and that off-road package right um, you know everything you can just take a hose to it gets dirty and you can just you know hose it on down so it, it's jeep through and through it is 100 percent truck it's 100 percent jeep i think that's it i think you nailed that awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wilson what are you thinking so far i like it it's uh it got a little different feel to it than a regular pickup yeah i, I noticed that right off the bat but uh handles well and, we, you know, we have a little more meaty off-road tires in this Rubicon package, so we can feel those when we hit the bumps and things yeah. like that, but, you know, it's, it's so what? You know, you're going to go off-road with this and have a good time, so it's yeah. not, you know, really meant for that. I like the bed feature where you can actually reach into it. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the height of the bed. That's a big thing in our area. Um, these trucks have gotten so tall, they're hard to use, and as a former farmer, he knows that, man, if you can't get in the bed, reach into it. You gotta take your little three-foot step ladder to get in the back of some of these. Yeah, and even at 6'2", a three-foot step ladder. Yeah. Mine's like a seven-foot step ladder. His is like a three. <laughs> um, anything else come to mind? What do you think of the interior? What do you think of like interior and exterior? Pretty handy. I like the window features. The doors can come off. And yep, so it's all there in the middle. You don't have to worry about all the wiring and all yep. that. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty snazzy little ride. Yeah, so $60,000, what do you think? It's not bad. I mean, for a lifestyle, it's got you know, it's got the lifestyle coolness factor to it. Yeah. If you were a work truck, you wouldn't. You know, this is not what you do. But oh, I don't know. Go, <laughs> go work and play at the same time. <laughs> there, there you go. We are working and playing today. So hey, uh, that's our quick tape on this uh, quick take. Excuse me, on this Jeep Gladiator. We're gonna swap in something else next and keep on moving. So this front-facing camera. Let's say it's dirty. So we have some dirt there, and Kelly's looking at this. So then we'll clean it. And there's a clean camera. And then this will dissipate when you get driving around. All right, so the next vehicle we're in is a 2019 Jeep Renegade Trailhawk 4x4. This is the uh, Jeep that was kind of, uh, it's, it's still a Jeep. It's got a little different look to it. Um, this has a new 1.3 liter inline four turbocharged engine. That's new for this model year. Uh, base price is $27,545. It's in Omaha orange, clear coat exterior paint, if you know the Broncos. Omaha! 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 Omaha. Uh, black interior colors, premium cloth, cloth, low back bucket seats. Yeah, okay, low back. Uh, low back. Uh, all right, so um, we still have some off-road capability on this. Uconnect system, um, total price is $33,905. Uh, I think optional equipment package, LED lights, heated front seats, heated steering wheel, remote start, keyless entry, and blind spot, some security stuff. Um, yeah. Yep, select terrain system. I do have, I, I'll put that on the screen. Select terrain does uh, snow, sand, mud, rock. You just turn the dial. I have a four wheel drive lock and a four wheel drive low. So this is, again, still Jeep cap capable. Um, it's got a unique interior, it's got Jeep ish thing all around it. So. All right. Well, so what do you think? Room in, room in the front, plenty of headroom. Yeah. Uh, I like the dash setup. It's just easy access. Um, nice big screen. And I think we were just talking about this. It, it drives okay. It's not our favorite vehicle. And it's never been kind of my favorite vehicle either. The seating position, the steering was a little bit different. And uh, I think, how's the turbo? Is it turbo better? Is it? Yeah, not really a lot of lag there. Not a lot of lag, but not overpowering. Yeah, yeah, so there's 
not a lot of power in it, but the turbo does help. It does help. Um, it's probably filling a weakness they had in the lineup where they, that's where they brought the turbo in, was to get a little more power out of it. Yeah. And uh, 22 city, 27 highway, 24 combined. We're right at 27, so and we're on the highway, so pretty much nailed it. Yeah. But yeah, it's not like it's... Uh, it's okay. I think just okay. You know, I don't see... There's not a lot of storage in the back that I feel like there's stuff. It's still a Jeep. It's just in a weird spot. And it's very unique. I mean, if you're looking for a more of a unique vehicle, um, this is definitely the one for you. Yeah, it's like a spoiler hood. Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to keep moving. Okay, next vehicle we're up in today is the 2019 Mazda CX-5. There's actually a review on this on the channel. I'll see if I remember to. I'll link above. Dee -dee. Um, Mazda CX-5 signature all-wheel drive, machine gray metallic, Katura Brown. I believe that's how I say it. Anyways, uh, this is 36,890 MSRP. A few optional equipment: uh, machine gray paint charge, rear bumper guard. Basically, it's 38,360 after the uh, dealer processing. 22 city, 24 combined, 27 highway. All right, so let me get right to the point. The big change this year for the CX-5 which is, this is like their mid-size SUV, it's two-row, CX-3 is a little bit shorter, uh, CX-9 is actually really uh, three-row. Uh, the big change is a new Skyactiv 2.5 turbocharged engine. Mazda's really known for their turbocharged engines, and so it finally made its way in the CX-5. It had been missing for a while, and the uh, automaker uh, customers think they've been asking for it. I know journalists have been asking for it quite a bit. Uh, 227 horsepower, 310 foot-pounds of torque, we have a six-speed um, automatic transmission, Skyactiv drive, six-speed, with sport mode. Oh, much. Who else likes sport mode? All right, so... Um, Not ex it already. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. 19... <laughs> He's ready to talk. Hold on. 19-inch yellow wheels. Uh, we've got tons of safety tech inside. Uh, Anti-theft engine to mobile... Uh, so. Any, lots of cool tech. Launch hill traction control, hill launch assist and uh, independent rear and front suspension, and front and rear stabilizer bars, electric, electric power assisted steering, all wheel drive, and we have the G-Factoring uh, Control Plus. Basically, in a nutshell, Mazdas are known for handling exceptionally well. And if you talk to most journalists, they will recommend Mazdas because most of us love to drive. We love to drive, we love Mazda. All right, Wilson. You. I like it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's handling this mountain road real well. Right, and it, it's fun with the turbo. Yeah, yeah, and, and and even the natural aspirator is really not that bad. And and Mazda really just did it because they can and they should. But uh, even the prior generation is still fantastic. So, what do you think of the styling? It's cool. I like it. A lot of headroom. Everything is accessible. Like it. I just like it. Well, there you go, folks. Wilson just likes it. All right, we're going to move on to, uh, and we've got to get into uh, Wilson's favorite car here in a minute. For the last vehicle of the day, we are in Wilson's favorite. We're in a 2019 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack Plus. It is in an octane red exterior color. It even has a badass color name. Golly. We have a black interior color inside. We have a Scat Pack logo, Napa Alcan Alcantara? Alcantara. Alcantara. Uh, oh, yeah, we have Claire in the back from the SRT team. Hello. And uh, uh, top of the stuff, we have a 392 V8. This is the 6.4 liter Hemi? Yep. 6.4 liter Hemi, uh, 392 V8. I said that again already. I'm saying this twice. It's a long day, folks. Stay with me. Um, eight speed automatic transmission. Base price is 38995 We have a few options uh, driver convenience. So we have some safety technology. We have the wide body package on this. So it's six grand more for the wide body. And you can see. Well, look at it. It's wide body. I'm putting the video on the screen for you. All right. We have a Torque Flight 8-speed automatic transmission. Um, oh, we have an upgraded transmission? Why is it? Why is the transmission $1,500 more? Because uh, this also comes with a manual. Oh. Claire's right there with the answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, SRT Performance Spoiler, 695. Scat Pack, Bumblebee, Stripe, 500 bucks. The uh, Zero uh, uh, Pirelli Zero Summer Tires are uh, 500 bucks or so. Anyways, all this great options adds to a total price of 54,600. So, um, I'm, I'm gonna ask the Claire some questions here. So Claire, yes. we uh, walk me through the engine choices here. Awesome, so uh, right now we're, like you said, in the 392, we have our 392 uh, Hemi V8. Um, yeah, and this is the new for 2019 Scat Pack Wide Body. Okay. Um, yeah, and so 
Sorry, was the sca well, scat pack was available before? Yeah, the, the, the wide body's the. Yes, the wide body is oh, new for 2019, but um, it's really cool with our scat pack. Um, you know, you, you have a lot of options. You can get into it's the most horsepower per dollar, so you can get obviously when you set the base price, you can get into a scat pack for um, under 40. And then we have a bunch of options. We've got um, a new 1320 drag car that has a lot of cool demon features, and then this one with the wide body, you have 305 Pirellis, six piston front brakes. 485 horsepower, 475 pound feet of torque, and a bunch of cool standard performance features. Uh, so then let's talk about uh, everybody wants to buy Hellcat. Hellcat was 717 this year. It's yep, new. It was 707, now it's 717. Dual, dual snorkel hood, yeah. Okay, then we have Demon. Do we do a different engine there? Or? Yeah, so for 2019, we actually took um, the heart of the Demon engine and we put it in the Hellcat Red Eye. So it's our oh, that's right. There's a red liter supercharged yep. um, high output engine, and that gets 700. Um, and then obviously Demon was 2018, one year only, um, 3,300 units, and that was 840 horsepower and 100 octane. Do you ever feel like you're like on a game show and be like, <laughs> wait folks, once <laughs> more, yeah. yeah, there's more. I mean, that's what's awesome with the Challenger though. We, um, you know, we have a lot of fun with it. We can do a lot of things with it. So, um, yeah, we, I mean, we have a, something for everyone. We've got a V6, we've got all wheel drive, we got the 5.7 V8, the 6.4 liter like we're in right now, and then you know, our supercharged 6.2 liter Hellcat engines. It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and this, I mean, it's the same vehicle, but done many different ways. Yes. It's just, it's There's a flavor for everybody. It's fantastic. Everyone should be driving a Challenger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are, and then for those that are confused, Challenger's two doors, Charger's four doors. Okay, um, we're in sport mode. We're driving down the mountains. We're coming into Colorado now. If you know this road, we're on 285, coming up on uh, I-70 and, and C-470. So, with all that said, Wilson. Yes. Is that all you're gonna say? He's going to Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's actually serious about this. So, <laughs> this is. Yeah, I know you waited all day to drive this. So your driving impressions are it's worth every moment of the wait. <laughs> worth every moment of the wait. So let's talk handling. How are you handling? Is it? So far, it's. I haven't got to do much yet with it we've been in pretty heavy traffic but just what i have it's handled real well yeah yeah so he's uh he's loving it folks that's uh, just that's the end story this is this is my midlife crisis car right here <laughs> <laughs> all right all right we're gonna go back to sequoia and we're gonna wrap up our thoughts in this whole event right are we ready to he's ready to drive i'm gonna stop talking to him he's ready to go i'm ready found that as entertaining as we found it to be shooting it. So let's talk with Wilson here and get his final thoughts on this trip, this experience our retired farmer went on. Hmm. You drove a variety of vehicles you haven't ever driven before. Probably most all of them. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it was it was fun. I had a good time. All right. So what, so thinking back, so now we've completed the event. We're done. We're uh, 100 miles away. We're back in our neck of the woods, you know, redneck kind of the woods. So thinking back on it, what kind of stands out in your mind? What are your I mean, what are your takeaways? Um, you know, when you look at the pickups uh, we drove, I think uh, the big blue Dodge was just plain fun to drive. <laughs> yeah. It it had the noise and sound and the power, uh, the Echo Diesel mileage. I yep. couldn't believe the mileage that thing was getting. Yep. Almost thirty. No, it was crazy. Um, getting into the cars, of course, you know, I'm going to go trade my tractor off for the Beamer. But, uh, <laughs> that was a fun little drive. That was fun. I, I liked it. The power, that thing was super fun. Uh, I'm going to say probably my most shocking one was the, the uh, Mazda. Yeah, the CX-5. The CX-5. Just, we was up in the mountains there, and the handling of that thing was just incredible. Just floored me. Um, but, as you can see in the video, my favorite, the old Challenger. Yeah, you had a, uh, you had a good time. I so, just about drove it home. <laughs> the fun story that we saved it last on purpose, because he knew how much it would 
Well, it would alter your view on other vehicles. Like, if, if you had to drive the Challenger first, then get it the, the, the Corolla, oh, I, I mean... There, there wouldn't have been any uh, contest. Right? I, I yeah. wouldn't want to drive anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have those favorites. Uh, what do you think of the, you know, kind of switching cars and getting in and out? It's basically like a variety of small test drives. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, it, uh, it, for never driving any of them, uh, learned di I learned different features that some of these cars, I've never seen some of this in these new cars. I've never dri hardly driven any of these new cars. Right, we have adaptive cruise control, we have lane keep assist. Yeah. That yeah, Subaru sure. kept you in lane of centering assist, so it kept you in the lane. I mean, that's something completely different. It was crazy. Uh, uh, just learned a lot. Uh, every, every ride was different and every vehicle had its own personality and feature, you know. Not every vehicle you get in you're gonna like, but I would say on the whole, everything had something that somebody's gonna like and the next guy's probably not gonna like. Right, right. But uh, for the for the group of vehicles that I drove, I would recommend probably to everybody. So think about this, you know, a lot of guys trade trucks after many, many years, right? Yeah. So average truck ownership historically, statistically sits at, and I my hand statistically, is about uh, five to seven years most guys are trading off at that point yeah when you have an 11 and you drove the 20 eco diesel that's nine years difference they're almost day and night different oh trucks. yeah yeah they're just uh, the ride uh, just fuel economy just there there's it is night and day yeah so if you're not actively shopping for a truck you haven't shopped for a truck for a long time well, you're probably going to be pretty damn you're gonna, surprised. You're going to be surprised. It's, uh, it's a whole different class. Yeah. I've uh, I've never been a Ram guy. I've been a Chevy guy. And uh, if I go to buy the next truck, it's in the running. Do you think that when you go to buy another vehicle now with this experience, that you'll shop around more? I'm going to, you know, I'll probably shop around more and I'm going to check into the features more. You know, I... I haven't had to buy a new vehicle for quite some time, and, and uh, actually the last vehicle we bought, it was just happened to be on the lot, and it was what they had. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to probably look for some of these features that I got to experience. Yeah. You yeah. know. So. Well, it it was it was cool. It was it was a different event. It was cool for me to watch him drive all this stuff and get different viewpoint on the different vehicles that. You know, I, I've been doing this job for a long time, and so there's certain things that I just take for granted. Yeah. I know I'm in this vehicle. I'm in it right now driving back to a Sequoia. I know the cruise control, for example, is a dongle st stick, which is what they call a dongle, trust me. But it's below the windshield wipers. I just know it because I've driven Toyota's for so many years. I know where, how to turn on a BMW and how to put it in gear. <laughs> because there's a little button on the glass shifter. you got to press the button and it backwards and put it in drive. I, I just know that. It was a good thing I had you because I'd probably still be sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I mean, there's there's certain things that I've just driven vehicles like that, so I just know them, and so it's, it was, it's very interesting. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you had a good time. I, you know, we had a good time filming it, and I realize it's probably not going to be a big view video, but sometimes, darn it, you do videos you like, and that was one I liked. So for more truck and SUV news that you like, check out pickuptrucktalk.com. Three words, pick up, truck, talk, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we're there. Trust me, I've done it. Make sure you hit subscribe, click the bell, share with your buddies. Uh, I think that was a fun video to do. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you down the road.